If you're working as a health, fitness, or a wellness professional, you may come across some clients that are dealing with biliary dyskinesia or a low functioning gallbladder, and it's really likely they're going to be confused about it. So in this video, I'm going to help you understand this situation and steps your clients may be able to take to improve their situation. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So when we're looking at this biliary dyskinesia, there seems to be a lot of the same symptoms that your client would be experiencing is if they had gallstones or some type of gallbladder attack. You can get a lot of those significant pain and a lot of the nausea and the throwing up and the things that could happen when someone has gallstones or a gallbladder attack. But when they run the test and they don't see any stones in here. So those symptoms usually come from some type of gallstone coming and blocking this biliary pathway so that the bile can't flow. There's some kind of stone in one of these ducts and then the bile gets all backed up and all that pressure creates all of those symptoms. But when they run the tests on your client, they don't see any gallstones in there. So then they're not in that gallstone category. So then they get to have a fancier name and it's biliary dyskinesia. Or they may just say you have a low functioning gallbladder, which I think is just hurtful if you're a gallbladder. So if a person doesn't have any stones, but they're still having all those symptoms, they have to give that a name so they can have a diagnosis. But when your clients research this issue, they're going to find that, oh wow, there's pretty much uh, just the only option of yanking out this gallbladder. And I'll put some papers and some links below to some people that just kind of feel like this is really the only option. And a lot of these people with these writing these papers are gallbladder removal surgeons. That's a part of the thing there. But pretty much the only option that they look to see that is available is having their gallbladder removed. And when they look at the causes of what's creating this problem, it's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know, something's going on. Is it some kind of hormonal issue that's creating the problem? Are there nerves that aren't working correctly? Are some muscles not functioning the way they should? It's just keeping this bile from flowing the way that it's supposed to? I don't know, we don't know what's causing it. So since there is no known fact for what's causing this issue, let's, in this video, let's just look at the possibilities. Let's look at things that could cause the problem and see, does that make sense to us at all? So when we're looking at why this gallbladder wouldn't be working correctly, we have to understand that the liver makes this stuff called bile, which is a soapy substance that helps us digest our food and it has some other purposes as well. But when the liver makes this bile, it comes down here and it gets stored in the gallbladder. That's the gallbladder's job. It stores and concentrates that bile so that a small amount of that bile can be more effective when it helps us with the digestive processes. Like it helps neutralize acids that come from the stomach. It helps us emulsify our dietary fats so that we can break those fats down and they can be used by the body. It helps us access fat-soluble vitamins like A, E, D, and K. All these things are very important. So the bile has a lot of features that are very important in the body. But one thing we need to understand when we see things not working correctly is, is sludge. And sometimes this bile becomes what they call sludge and it becomes a little bit thick and sticky and yucky. And I'm gonna put a link to a paper in the description below this video from the Cleveland Clinic. And what this paper was talking about is they feel that there are issues like obesity and inflammation that have the ability to thicken up that bile and create this sludge. And they're saying, well, if this is all sludged up and it can't really flow the way that it's supposed to, then really the bile could just get backed up as if there was a stone there. So the sludge can keep things from moving in the same way that a stone could. And they kind of felt in this paper, what if this is what's causing this dyskinesia issue? You know, if the gallbladder's job is to concentrate this bile, but issues like obesity or inflammation are thickening up the bile so that it can't really flow the way that it's supposed to, then maybe all of this bile doesn't move out when it's supposed to move out. Maybe some of it stays in there, and then what's it gonna do? The gallbladder is going to continue to concentrate it. That's the gallbladder's job. And the more it concentrates this bile, the thicker it becomes, the more it becomes like this sludge, and then it's not moving out. And this paper also talked about what if it's just that this concentration thing is concentrating it into sludge and maybe even eventually into stones. So maybe this biliary dyskinesia is similar to stones, but just before any stones have actually formed. 
Now, is this Cleveland Clinic paper right? Is this what's happening with biliary dyskinesia? I don't know, doesn't seem to be a fact, but would it make sense? Yeah, that would actually make a lot of sense. A lot of times the medical world likes to blame organs, like, ah, stupid gallbladder, you're not working right, let's yank you out and throw you in the trash. But what if it's not the gallbladder's fault? What if he's like, I'm trying to do it, I'm trying to push it out, it's like tar in here, I can't get it to move. If this bile becomes too thick and sticky to flow correctly and it continues to concentrate, it can turn into that sludge that will restrict the movement and can create all those gallbladder attack type symptoms. So another thing that we want to understand is the Cleveland Clinic paper thought that obesity and inflammation can thicken up the bile, but I'll put some links in the description below that kind of give us indications that other things can thicken up the bile, like high levels of estrogen or consuming too many grains or what we call a catabolic imbalance where at the cellular level, the body should move from a catabolic state during the day to an anabolic state at night. But the problem is some people can get stuck in one of those states. And if somebody's stuck in what we call a catabolic imbalance, that seems to have the ability to thicken up this bile as well. So there's other reasons that this bile could become thick and then continue to concentrate until it becomes sludge or eventually stones. And to understand this more, we need to think about the gallbladder's jobs. So when a client eats food, their stomach should make hydrochloric acid or HCL. And this HCL is meant to help them acidify that food so that they can break it down and get all the nutrients out of that food. And then once the food is acidified, it leaves the stomach and comes down here into the duodenum, which is like the first 10 inches of the small intestine. And when that acidity hits the duodenum, that's what triggers the gallbladder to squirt this alkaline bile down. The bile is alkaline and helps us neutralize these acids. And when this alkaline bile hits this acidic product leaving the stomach, those opposite pHs collide and create like this sizzle that really helps us bust the food apart and get all the nutrients out of that food. So neutralizing those acids is very important. But think about this. What if a client isn't making enough stomach acid? This is very common today. Millions of people every day are turning off their stomach acid on purpose. They do it every day. But also a lot of clients are not making enough stomach acid and they don't even know it for a wide variety of reasons. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in the body that can restrict that acid producing function. So if they're not acidifying that food correctly, then when the food does eventually leave the stomach, there's no acidity there to trigger that gallbladder to squirt the bile down. So if the gallbladder is not being called on, well, more bile is just going to stay in the gallbladder and continue to concentrate until it concentrates into sludge or stones, creating all of this trouble. And we also want to think about these triggers. You know, sometimes it could just be the triggers that are the problem, not the actual gallbladder. Another thing that could trigger the gallbladder to squirt bile down is consuming dietary fats. Bile helps us emulsify or break down our dietary fats. So that has the ability to trigger bile to come down as well. But a lot of people are trying to avoid dietary fats. They're still living in the 80s when we were told that we should wear parachute pants and avoid dietary fats. So they're still running in horror from dietary fats. So that could be something else that's not calling on this bile to come down and allowing it to stay in there and concentrate for too long. So are these issues what's creating the biliary dyskinesia or a low functioning gallbladder? That doesn't appear to be the mainstream opinion, but would these things make sense? Yeah, maybe they would make a little bit of sense. So one thing that you could do with your clients is you could just look at, are there other things going on that would indicate that maybe bile has become too thick and sticky to flow correctly? Or maybe even they're not making enough stomach acid to trigger that bile. So in the description below, we'll put a link to our videos for 10 signs your client is not making enough stomach acid and 10 signs your client's bile is not flowing correctly. And if you need to help clients understand how to correct these issues, my book Health Pro Results chapters three and four kind of walk you through helping clients figure out which aspects of digestion are not working correctly and steps you can help them take to correct those issues. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'll put a link in the description below where you can get the whole thing totally for free and that'll walk you through that process. And if you're a consumer that just happened upon this video because you like the topic, then you can check out my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, and chapters three and four of that book go over those same topics. And we'll put a link in the description below so you can download that for free as well. 
And if you have clients that you feel like you already know that maybe bile is not flowing correctly, you can jump over right now and check out our video on five steps to help clients improve bile flow. I hope this helps.